Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on one of the best Warlock builds out there that you can use to master legendary content to Grandmaster content of all types. The Controverse Hold setup will be familiar to those who have lived and died by the exotic effectiveness for giving users near infinite vortex grenade spam. Its ease of use and strength can make taking on both Baton and bosses with high health a breeze in the long run, and thanks to Void subclass update, you can become near invincible from using them. So in today's session, I'm going to show you how to build an endgame to Grandmaster setup that is capable of providing debuffs, 17% void weapon buffs, high damage reduction, and a flexibility for the user's sake. If you're looking to be master raid and GM ready, then this build is just for you. So to start, you're going to want to have feed the void so each time you defeat a target with void abilities, you will get devour. Then you want Chaos Accelerant, where overcharging your grenade increases the size and linger duration of the Vortex Grenade. The simple aspect setup will provide users with a devour on demand and longer lasting Vortex Grenades, which for most endgame content means that you can take out a Ultra Combatant within one single overcharge grenade, if timed right. Survivability will always be on our mind and using healing risk will help users out in the most dire situations. However, I do not recommend you use the Child of your Gods this time round, as you want the overcharging effect to be combined into Controverse Hold Exotic Effect, where Charged Void Grenades can return grenade energy back to us upon user's hit. If you want to make up survivability, then having a weapon with Repulsive Brace on it, for example, can further support the build by providing an extra 100% overshield towards the user. Combine that with the high damage reduction and Controverse Hold Exotic Effect and you'll have a long-lasting setup for years to come. The fragments used are Echo Remnants, where your lingering grenade duration are extended, Echo Explosion, where void ability kills will cause targets to explode, and Echo of Undermining, which provides users a 15% grenade debuff. Both Remnants and Undermining are a go-to for the build, as we want to make sure our grenades are putting in the work. With the updated subclass, it's even more easier to do damage across the board without needing to rely on Hunter Tether or Divinity, unless you want big damage numbers. The sheer fact that you can use this against a boss over and over again and pretty much get all your grenade energy back with ease basically allows you to apply debuffs onto a single target for free and also frees up weapon usage for you and your team. On top of that, applying the two void surge mods for that 17% weapon buff plus the 15% from undermining means that you'll be outputting roughly a 34% buff overall. For just that, is well worth the investment. For the mods and stats section, resilience and discipline are the two main stats to invest in with a tier 7 being the lowest and a tier 10 being the highest. Now let's get this part out of the way with. Resilience can straight up be a tier 9 to 10 for the user, so we can have a higher damage reduction while in combat. At tier 9 you're getting a 27% damage reduction throughout the pack, which can be combined with an overshield for an extra layer of HP. Do note that overshield and damage reduction do not stack as they are both different to each other, but they do work hand in hand. If you wish as well, you could also add on the dampener mods for reducing splash damage intake from enemies as well, which is something I like to use a lot in end game content. For your discipline, I would recommend a tier 10 for the max cooldown rate for your grenades, but also as a backup in case the enemy you face decides to walk out of their grenade at the last minute. If you want, you can reduce it down to a tier 8 and rely on the grenade based mods to make up the rest, but do not go any further than that. Ideally for our endgame setup, we want to be balls to the wall when going up against threats, so having a grenade kickstart and two bower mods is a must have for the bonus of offering us a quick grenade energy after use. With the following mods, high stat and controversial hold granting us energy upon using our grenades, you don't need to add anything more than that to the build. This will leave you room to add whatever necessary mods are best fit the build and aim for the setup, such as times 2 surge mods for constant weapon damage buff. Going this pathway, you want to add on 2 charged up mods, time dilation mod, and times 2 void cipher mods so you can overall sustain your armor charges through standard gun play. Don't forget to also add on the firepower mod so you can create orbs of power via grenades alone, as this will also be a huge in the long run. After this, you're then kind of left with a few odd items that add for the build, which can be down to you. Personally, as we want survival in mind, I went with something that covers that well, such as Ashes to Assets for getting our super up quickly via grenades, bolstering destination for getting back class ability energy via grenades damage, harmonic reserves for increasing the amount of heavy ammo you can carry, 
and recuperation mod for replenishing health via orbs of power. Such a simple setup is all the user needs for making the build as sustainable as possible once in endgame environments, or generally anything at this point. And now lastly, the weapons being used can go one of many ways. You can either have a dedicated setup designed for endgame entirely, or you can have a setup that is flexible and can be switched in between different content. The choices are endless, so I went with a setup that is practically flexible in all content available. I have Funnel Web with Substance and Adrenaline Junkie for the build, so they can regain ammo after kills and also get a huge damage number upon using our grenades. Consistently, the Vice Stinger trait has been nerfed to not trigger so much, but is still very much viable when it does kick in. Plus, with the Substance perk available, we can increase the chance of procking it more often by simply retaining the weapon's ammo for longer. It's one of the best void SMGs to use in game with its high fire rate and good damage, and although it can't get repulsive brace for that extra damage protection, we can easily swap it out whenever we like. Afterwards, a good void heavy of your choice will be suitable for the boss damage effects you will have throughout the content. The combination from the DSC raid with reconstruction is probably one of the best machine guns to have for a steady rate of fire, damage, ammo size and perk pool. If you are lucky and get the Regan grenade launcher from this season activities, then that weapon with spike, auto loading and cascade point is also a perfect setup for whatever you have in mind. Overall, this build is incredible for survivability, damage, flexibility and overall use it on the battlefield. No matter what content you have in mind, this build will allow you to take them on with little effects on the user's overall skill. It offers players a way to solo objectives without needing to put the work in to overall achieve the goal of the build, which for many is a godsend for those who want something flexible and strong but doesn't require a lot of thought into it. Take the new raid with the two bosses for example. A build like this against the boss would be perfect as they don't move around too much and the amount of damage being applied to them will allow you to get a full grenade back, which you can then use for this smaller ad in the arena. Or take on the new Battlegrounds arena on legend mode with ads showing up in the hundreds and you need to find a way to break through them. This build here will cover those angles of yours and make them a lot more easier to navigate through. There are many, many versions of this style build around and no matter what you choose, it all comes down the same pathway. You also have to take in mind that with a new difficulty of enemies we face, you're going to want to have a build that you can rely on for hitting hard and sustaining survivability as long as the content provides. Once GMs are made available, I'm going to be using this setup as my go-to clearing out areas and dealing with bosses build. But also, once some of the more newer GMs are made available, I want to make fully sure I can use this build against the boss and adds while retaining ammo when I need it most. If I was you, I will take this build, adapt it to your needs, and save it for future loadouts. But of course, outside of that, what do you think of the build? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. Now it was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.